Hello and welcome to Comic Culture. I'm Terrence Dollard, a professor in the Department of Mass Communication at the University of North Carolina at Pembroke. My guest today is artist and pro wrestler Andy Belanger. Andy, how are you today? I'm amazing. Doing really well. How are you guys? We're doing pretty well down here. Um, so let's talk a little bit about your work in comics. Um, you are uh, in Montreal, which is, uh, I'm imagining it's, it's got a different cultural input uh, than American comic, uh, or United States comic readers are used to. So I was wondering if you could kind of talk about the comic scene there and how that sort of, you know, helped shape your style because you do some, some amazingly detailed work and we talked a little bit before we started about how your background work is just so detailed. And I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about that. So Montreal is, is uh, as most people know, is bilingual and mostly French. So it, it has a very different feel than most American or Canadian cities for that matter, you know, where Toronto feels a lot like, uh, you know, like a New York or LA, Montreal feels like, like it could be a town in France somewhere. It has a very European feel. The attitude is completely different. Uh, it, it's very exciting, but as far as comics go, you have as many people, if not more, into French Bay Days and French comics as you are anything American. So, um, you know, everyone here is in love with Mobius and Drele and all that sort of like early heavy metal crew. So um, from from France. So uh, that's sort of what I've always been in love with. When I was growing up, I was always obsessed with monster comics, stuff like Werewolf by Night and and you know Tomb of Dracula and things like that. And then I got into like the Bagley Spider Man and stuff like that. But uh, when I hit around 13, 14, I became obsessed with Heavy Metal Magazine, and, and that's where I found Mobius and, you know, those kind of guys. We do occasionally get some, um, some comics from Europe that, that come through and may have a big hit. Mobius, of course, uh, yeah. is, is considered a genius, even in the United States. Um, so uh, it, it's just interesting when you get a chance to talk to creators from outside the, the sphere of, of the United States, uh, whether they are in, uh, you know, Europe or South America, or even in Montreal, which is, like you said, a, a different climate uh, culturally than, than even Toronto. You also mentioned that you are a wrestler. So I'm wondering if you could talk a little bit about how the storytelling in wrestling is similar to the storytelling in comics. Yeah, so what's really interesting about being in a wrestling match is, is when you're watching a match, there might be hundreds of moves happening like during the match, but the way they remember a, a match and structure a match so that it is, is a really strong match, is they, they kind of go by the hero's journey. So um, a wrestling match will start off with a shine where the the, the hero looks really cool, like the, the good guy or the baby face, as they're called in wrestling. And then there's a thing called a cutoff, where the bad guy, the heel, will, will stop the good guy from his moves and looking cool to moving into you know him beating him down in what's called the heat. And inside, you know, a, a, a heat is when, you know, a story for, for a character is all coming apart and they're being beaten down by the problems of the story. And then that builds up, builds up until the comeback and fire of the hero where the hero comes back like a Hulk Hogan is hulking up and getting ready, you know, or Rocky is training and he's going into the ring and he's, he's about to do this thing. And then it moves into, you know, like a whole bunch of things called falsies, back and forth movements, and then it gets to the finish. And then you have this big, explosive, climactic finish. Um, it's super exciting, but the way I was taught uh, great wrestling structure um, just matched comic books so much. So really, the difference between me writing and drawing comics is not much different from me actually being in a ring doing, you know, top rope clotheslines and body slams and, and kryptonite crunches. It's kind of like the same thing. It's, uh, it's really exciting. And that's how I remember everything. I'm like, oh, this is my shine you know, where I look cool at the beginning and because I'm normally a baby face with a mask. You know, uh, it's interesting because uh, I have worked on a, a wrestling TV show called uh, Midnight Mayhem, which aired here in North Carolina for a few years. And you could always tell the, the wrestlers who had that knack for storytelling because the matches would always be more dynamic and the crowd would always be engaged. So uh, is this something that, uh, that you're able to put into your comics simply because, like you were saying, you were trained a certain way as a wrestler and, and you just see these connections or is it something, it's all of these influences, it's wrestling, it's comics, it's films, it's novels that, that sort of inform your storytelling. Yeah, it's everything. 
like when I approach a, a comic book, I feel like a filmmaker. Like I have all the, the visuals in my head and the story in my head. And then the same with the wrestling match. Like I have that wrestling match that I have with a person before going in, I kind of am already watching the match happen inside my head, right? I don't know what moves they're going to do. That's part of the fun of wrestling. When you actually get there, um, you don't know what they want to do. They don't know what you want to do, but you know you're going to put those things into that structure. Um, it's the same thing with comics. And now my new comic, Mother Trucker, that I'm putting out with my new company that we're building called Lethal Comics, I'm actually trying to merge those things. I'm trying to make like an exciting space wrestling comic where I'm actually merging my wrestling and the, the comic book storytelling. And uh, we'll see what happens. It's pretty fun so far. So let's, let's talk about this. Uh, so it's Mother Truckers. Mother Trucker, yeah, is the name of the comic. And it's about a woman who's like a, a intergalactic, uh, space wrestling champion so the idea is in my world in the future wrestling is trucking so if you let's say want my contract for walmart and to ship my walmart stuff uh, you know in space you have to wrestle me for my contract and the back of my truck transforms into a ring and we, we wrestle for the contract and then that gets televised to people in space so it's kind of merging this sort of like space trucking idea with uh with the uh, wrestling as being like the catalyst for uh you know people wanting to combine entertainment and and space trucking that's a really fun concept I, I mean there's you can see just from the the few things that you've told me about it you can see the possibilities in terms of of story and in terms of action and in terms of i mean there's just a whole world that you've you've sort of built so as you start working on this um i'm assuming that you are uh, doing some crowdfunding. So I was wondering if you had uh, a strategy with that that you could kind of share with us. So we, we crowdfunded the first Mother Trucker comic and we did uh, just about 30,000 Canadian um, on the first book, which was we did not expect. And from there, because we actually saw that, you know, we can run a business making and doing whatever we want as far as creative goes. My friends and I started a company called Lethal Comics that we're launching now, and it's going to be built the same way. So we're going to be running a Kickstarter business and um, each of us is going to have their own title. But the, the way the comic book stuff worked, it was, it was just fantastic. The fans really got behind us. We had all kinds of tiers and, and stretch goals where people were doing posters and stickers and I had guest artists come in and we did multiple covers kind of like you would in a comic store so it's it's basically us setting up a complete boutique uh, publishing company uh, where we can do whatever we want creatively like if I go to image I have to appeal to the taste of Eric Stevenson who runs the company or if I want to work for Marvel or DC, I'm pretty much at the mercy of what the editors want me to do. And that always, for me, is like a watered down scenario, because every time I get on a project, they, they're so often, they're like, we love your artwork. Now, can you be like this guy and do this? And you're kind of like, and it's always kind of not as uh, effective. You know, you're not actually using me. So it came to a point in my career, which is 25 years, where it's time just to, to be me. And uh, people can buy my comics that are written and drawn just by my, you know, from me. And I mean, I have a team, you know, like every time I finish a script, I have like 12 people look at it. And every time I finish pages of artwork, I have peers that have been in the business for 30, 40 years that look at my stuff because I think that's important. But I think it, what is important is a lot of comics have gotten away from actually the creativity of them because we're all trying to get a spot in one of these companies to make a buck. And Kickstarter has really shown myself and our friends that, you know, we can do it on our own if you want to work. And, you know, most of us are like crazy workhorses. So it's kind of fun building, a, building this company from scratch. We kind of wish we had done it 10 years ago because it's actually really exciting. You talked about working for Marvel or DC, and I'm imagining that, you know, while it's a thrill to work there, you're also dealing with somebody else's IP, and they have, uh, I'm sure, uh, in terms of, you know, Disney and, and AT&T, they've got ideas about what they want that property to do and, and long-range goals and whatnot. So I'm imagining there's a lot more freedom uh, to do what you want when you're working on your own IP, but there's probably also a big learning curve because, you know, managing a company uh, managing to do all of the artwork and managing to do all of the stuff outside 
uh, that you know goes into the day-to-day -day life of being a person, uh, that's got to be a, a difficult balancing act to to make all of that stuff fit. Oh yeah, oh yeah, it's all about that balance. <laughs> um, I I've developed a schedule where I'm two months on. Uh, making the books and then one month doing the Kickstarters. The fulfillment of the Kickstarter bleeds into the next month. So that's our plan. My first one, actually, like two days ago, the, all the books just left left the building. So people are getting their mother truckers this week as we speak. And then moving forward, that's going to be the thing. We're, we're looking at it almost like a music manager or something where I'm Metallica and my friend is, is Megadeth and my other friend is Anthrax, so we're, we're utilizing each other's resources and, and fan bases to, to pool together to make this kind of cool company under our label. Um, it helps because we have friends, so it's not all that responsibility is on me, but it's also on a few other guys. So it's almost like a little bit like the Knights of the Round Table, where we're all sort of like sitting around a table, you know, putting forth our, our resources, ideas, and our talents uh, to go on this uh, adventure that we're on. So you mentioned this this uh, round table. I'm thinking more like the Monsters of Rock, uh, where you are working with your partners to build this company. So how is it that you kind of coordinate, let's say, your social media uh, with their social media so that your projects can get you know, promoted with their group and so on and so forth and, and sort of get that you know, cross-pollination that's going to help everybody? Well, it helps that we're all in the same studio in Montreal. That helps. So it's myself, Kerry Nord, and Carl Kroeschel are like the, the three main uh, people in Lethal. And we sort of, if any of us have like a project coming out, we're always like helping with, you know, promoting it on our social media. So that's basically the plan that we have with Lethal. But now Lethal Comics, we, you know, we've started Instagrams and Twitters. And, you know, we have a website launching in two weeks uh, through Squarespace. And uh, there'll be a store there where you can get products and all that kind of stuff. So it, it really is like we're, we're starting our own business and uh, it, it's very exciting. So the idea is, yeah, we're, we're using our, each other's social media and, and fan base that exists to get, you know, everyone involved and excited. And uh, in the future, we have some crazy plans about doing some anthology books where it'll be the three of us in the book kind of like a heavy metal magazine from Lethal, like a Lethal Presents. And then our friends will be, you know, outside of our, our group will we'll get involved and, and helping out. That's going to be really fun. We have stuff planned for the summer for that. It's going to be really neat. It sounds like it's, it's uh, going to be a, a lot of fun. It sounds like there's a lot of energy uh, going into this as well. And then starting to bring in some, some folks from the outside and then using that to sort of, uh, I guess, create more energy and more heat, as, as they would say, uh, if you were doing yeah. some wrestling work. Um, so the other question is, you know, when you're working uh, for Marvel or DC and you are hired as a, a, let's say, an artist, how is that different from when you are writing and, and drawing your own stuff uh, in terms of how you approach, you know, putting the image on the page? With those guys, with Marvel and DC, I would get a script. And then from the script, I would, I would you know, just do my, my craft, which is the, the comic making. And, and I see comic making uh, for myself as... You know, I, I have a degree in fine art, so painting and sculpture and stuff like that. So my comic pages are definitely art, but I also see it as like filmmaking. So I see myself as a director. So it's almost like, OK, you brought me your film script. I'm going to now make a, a comic book film with this through my lens, you know, and my lens might be a little bit more like David Lynch's or maybe a little bit more like Michael Bay's. Everyone has their own flavor. Um, but when I actually get to write, um, I'm writing for the, the strengths that I have in my art. So that's why it feels stronger. So whenever I do something that I write and draw, my friends have always said it's it's by far better than anything I've ever done for a company. I think Mother Trucker is, it's my best work by far. When, when you're talking about this, you can see the enthusiasm that you have for this project. And I'm imagining that, that the fact that it is your own creation is going to make it more exciting for you because you said you've got a career that's going back 25 years. At some point, you know, it does it become you know a job rather than a passion uh you know where it maybe loses its flavor for you and then when you start doing your own uh maybe it brings back that that sense of wonder that you had when you first broke in you nailed it on the head that's exactly it it feels like i i'm just starting from where i was before and how i get through a project is i try to channel kind of like my 13 year old self i try to like put myself back into that sort of like 
teenage boy that like got obsessed with comics and and what stood out and i try to to put myself there every time and in the studio right now we're all kind of like that again we're all sort of like crazy excited about the stuff we're doing because as fun as it is to like take on a character from another company it's also that also comes with a lot of um you know, control on their end and, you know, get, you get a lot of editorial notes and a lot of changes. And as far as comics go, you know, in the last, like, I don't know, five years, it, it seems like as a comic book artist, we're really interchangeable. Like people don't really care as much who's on the books. It's more a writer's game and who's writing the books, right? That's what people remember as far as I like see it. You know, they'll be like, oh, this is a this is a Scott Snyder book, you know, and if it's not Greg Capullo on that book, it's kind of like, are they really thinking about that artist? So we, we started to feel interchangeable and, you know, with rates dropping in the industry, especially in the last year, we're kind of like, we need to take responsibility for our books. That means writing our books. So we started a writing circle up here, almost like Chuck Palahniuk always was part of writing circles. We started a writing circle here where we go through all the process of writing with each other and help each other on our scripts and outlines and all that kind of stuff. Uh, and that's been invaluable. I've always written my own comics, like throughout the years, like I've taken gigs um, for, for art duties, but I've always been writing in the background. So it's, it's not as tough for me to, to jump into a writing scenario. And I think when I'm writing, I'm doing sort of like my wildest stuff, which is... Uh, which is exciting. And I think you hit the nail on the head. We're all like super, super excited about what's going on right now in the studio. It's, uh, it's like we're all playing. It's really fun. It's kind of like, you know, going back to the, the Metallica uh, analogy you were making before, you know, when a band hits that moment where uh, playing becomes less about the notes and more about, you know, being into that, that song, it, it seems that you're hitting that, that stage again when you are working on your comics. So, you know, as you are looking at the, the page right now, um, you've got a whole new universe that you've created, uh, and literally it is in space, so there's, there's open doors everywhere for you to go and create uh, how the, your characters are going to exist and in what environments they're going to exist. So what sort of thought do you put into building that universe in you know, backgrounds, and, and how does that you know, influence what you're going to have the characters do? World building is some of my favorite stuff. Um, not just the, the worlds that they walk into, but also the, the vehicles and the products of that world. Like what's advertising like in space? Is there a space highway with, with floating satellite billboards and things like this? That's kind of what I'm after. The, the story I'm writing right now is sort of like an uber Americana in space in the future. You know, there's like satellite burger joints and truck stops in space and basically all those great things that you would have on a road trip through the, through the States. Now you're, you're going to have that in space. Um, it, it's kind of wild. Like when a, when a truck wrestling match happens, people's cars just like on the, on the space highway, just stop and fly over and they become spectators. And it's all, it's all kind of like uh, really fun. I would love to have a wrestling match on a boat one time. That'd be really great have a ring on the boat and then people just show up in their own boats watching. That's sort of like the idea with, with space trucking and, and that universe. And that universe will have, you know, junkyard planets and oil planets and anything that would come along with that sort of universe, anything wrestling. So, you know, maybe there's a luchador planet and so many cool uh, avenues to go down. It's, it's really like I'm creating my own He-Man universe here. All the truckers also have sort of like that same body type, like all the He-Man action figures. So if I do action figures, it'll, <laughs> it'll <laughs> sort of look like that. <laughs> it's, it's fun because, you know, um, there's a seriousness that has sort of overtaken uh, certain comic franchises. And when we start to get too serious, it, it doesn't become fun for the, the reader, at least not for me, when, when every uh, story has to top the last one in terms of how grim it can be. So it's, it's, a, it's a nice change of pace to hear that there's some levity that goes into a comic that can be you know, just as satisfying, if not more satisfying, because it has that different tone. Yeah, I think so. I think you can, like, visually feel and taste and smell when a comic is clearly a movie pitch and when it's actually a comic book. There's always that great thing with Alan Moore where he says, I make comic books that can't be made into film, even though <laughs> every one of his comics is pretty much made into a film. 
he he doesn't make comics for film and that's what we want to do at lethal we're making comic books for comic books and we want to sell comic books we don't make movies so we want to get back to that feel of like pure joy inside of comic book making mother trucker is exactly that it's the most me thing that i've ever done where you're combining my my wrestling world and my comic book world um and i think that's important and maybe the industry needs to get back to that you know we we need to hear these voices it's always i want to see this person on a, a corporate license instead of i just want to hear what that person has to say what are their stories i think we need to get back to that it's funny because you know we do see some of these uh, big names that go from from one studio to another one publisher to another and you don't really see much of the the influence of that creator because i'm imagining editorials involved in that uh, and to a certain extent but um when you're working on your own books it's it's you know that open road in front of you. So I'm just wondering, when you are sitting down at the drawing board and you are starting a page, uh, are you doing it the old school way where it's you know pencil and ink on a on Bristol board, or are you onto the you know the digital tools, whether it's you know like a Clip Studio or if it's you know uh, Illustrator or something like that? Well, I was one of these guys that was like a hardcore traditionalist. It's got to be on paper and physical, and if it's not, it's not really comic books. And then uh, in 2019, I lived in Florence, Italy. My wife is a painter, uh, like a realist painter. And uh, she went down to finish her schooling down there. And uh, when we went, we just like, my gear is like intense, like the amount of pens and ink and paper. And it's hard to find, even in Montreal, it's hard for me to find the stuff that I like as far as art supplies. So um, what happened was we, my friend Kerry Nord got one of the, the new iPads and we were watching him draw on it and it was pretty incredible. So I, I was talking to my wife and we ended up getting one for myself so I didn't have to take all that stuff. So she was like, okay, well, your next cover, try it on there. If you can't do it as well as you do it on paper, then we'll just take it back. And I was like, you know, you know, and those things are a couple grand. So um, that first cover I did digitally in Clip Studios on my iPad was better than anything I'd ever done. Like I took to, I took to the iPad uh, clip studio thing, like, like a duck to water. I, I always say like before I was kind of like, uh, you know, like a, a special forces, like a uh, soldier, you know, like hire me for some serious gigs. But when I got the iPad and went digital, uh, on clip, it was like, uh, I became captain America. It was like super soldier serum. Those artists that I always wanted to be, or was it like trying to emulate portions of guys like Mobius and Atomo and all that stuff? I could suddenly do all that work. My problem was when I was traditional, I'm kind of like the, you know, big wrestler, heavy handed. I can't get a very thin, dainty ink outline. So a lot of my first work at Image, I was working on paper that was double what 11 by 17 was, like Paul Pope size paper, like gigantic, almost poster size to get my thin lines. But they would take forever. So once I went digital, I was, I was able to get the, the line weights that I'd really been struggling with getting on 11 by 17 or 13 by 19 paper. And uh, I became a different artist. I became the artist I always wanted to be digitally. That's, that's fascinating because I, I dabble a little bit uh, when I have free time and I, I did get myself a, a tablet recently and tried to play around with it. And I was surprised at how easy it is and, and how easy it is for you to get into too much detail because I can blow the screen up and I can you know start working a little bit too much. Do you find yourself you know, maybe going a little too far as a result? I have a trick for you. <laughs> I call it the, uh, the camera trick. So when I'm working on a panel or a page, if I think it's too busy or, or it's not breathing enough to let the, the focal point in the, the panel be on the subject matter that I'm, or the piece of information I'm trying to tell, what I do is I screen cap it and then look at it on my phone and it takes my brain out of the drawing and then I become a, a, a critic. Um, when I'm working on something, you can't be a critic. But when you pull out and like put it on Instagram or something, all of a sudden I can be a critic and go, ah, that's not working or this is working or I like this. And that's that's my trick. You should try it. It okay. really it's weird how it works. It works really well. So I'm I call it the camera trick. I'm going to have to do that. Uh, um, but Andy, they're telling us that we have about a minute left. If people sure. watching wanted to uh, find out more about your work, what's the website? We will be at lethalcomics.com coming up in about two weeks. Um, but for myself, it's Andy at, uh, and, or sorry, uh, at Andy Belanger on pretty much everything. Uh, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, 
uh, all these things. That's where you can find me at Andy Belanger. Uh, also, you'll see me in my wrestling mask. So if it says Animal Bob Anger, um, that's me. Andy, I want to thank you so much for taking time out of your very busy day to talk with me oh, today. Well, thank you. I love your set. Oh, your thanks. set's great. <laughs> I'd like to thank everyone at home for watching Comic Culture. We will see you again soon. Comic Culture is a production of the Department of Mass Communication at the University of North Carolina at Pembroke.